here we go we're live look out it's gonna come up in a minute it'll come up in a minute look out but we just want to test and see if you can be heard so i've got it should be mm -hmm. here it is okay okay hi karen <laughs> That might help, but I actually don't think you can be heard. Mm hmm. Not sure it's happening. Hi, Rhonda. How you doing? Give me a second. <laughs> Hold, please. Technical difficulties. Now I can send you a link to the stream, but you don't have to show your camera. Well, if you're not, cause I know you're not very comfortable with that. So up to you. All right, well, I can copy this link to you and I will send it to you on the Skype um, there we go and that's a link to this actual stream all right Hi, Time to Shine Homestead. How are you doing? We're just working out some technical difficulties because I have a guest today. Yep. Okay, I, uh, I think we're going to cut off the Skype call and then I will grab you in here because you've just entered the green room. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. We have a Karen. Do we have a carrot? <laughs> oh, nice. 10 more chickens. That's awesome. I think she's having fun with this. <laughs> We're working on it, guys. We are working on it. Today's live stream is about 10 ways to save money on your utilities. And I've asked Karen to come and give me a hand from Rose's Allotment Adventures. So if you're not following her, it'd be really, really cool to go and give them a follow. Um, Rose is her daughter and Karen is awesome and a wealth of knowledge when it comes down to um, greening up and saving money and doing all those kinds of things if we can get her on <laughs> we'll work on it we're working on it <laughs> all right anywho Okay, so um, 
Yeah, so over here in the UK, the energy prices have just skyrocketed. And when I say skyrocketed, I mean, in some cases have tripled overnight. And in a lot of cases, more, I mean, we were told that there would be a 54% um, increase. And in three cases out of the five that came back to me, they've all tripled. And in two cases, their direct debit has doubled. So, and then literally, and more overnight, which is absolutely horrific. Um, those who have had their, um, their, um, their bills tripled are actually people who are on prepaid electric, which is over 10 million homes in this country. Um, and they're mostly owned or lived in by the poorest of people. So they've just been hit horrendously to top it off. Um, there's a lot of protesting going on over here with um, petrol and diesel and gas at the gas companies and the uh, there's not really any petrol and gas to be found um, at the moment unless you're incredibly lucky and that's been going on since the weekend and it's just getting worse. Um, thankfully, where Tanny works, they supply their own diesel. It's there. But I figure when it runs out, that'll be it, which will mean people won't be able to get their meds and that will be a major, major issue. Um, yeah, so prices here are going silly. Um, they are in the skyrocketing stage. They are no, not in, people keep saying hyperinflation. It's nothing to do with hyperinflation. Hyperinflation hasn't been around since the 20s. And to find out more about that, go have a look at Country Mama's channel because she put up a really great video on hyperinflation with her and Papa Jim um, a little while ago. And um, I'll see if I can find a link to that because um, it was a great video, actually. Um, Okay, new things, and I would send anyone there to watch it because it is absolutely brilliant. Um, let's see if I can find it. It's not too far away. No, it's after play that. Here we go. Yep. All right. So this is the link to um, Country Mama Musings um, Hyperinflation Don't Fall for the Hype video so if you want to know more about um hyperinflation and why it is not actually a thing then you need to watch that video that i have just put a link to in the chat so let me just see if i can find karen <laughs> um hello are you here So we're going to get stuck into this. Now, if you guys, um, some of this is very relevant. Some of it is only relevant to those. I can't hear you, darling. We can't hear you. Um, have you had a look where it says, should at the bottom of your screen have a little mic um, thing and a little arrow beside it? And if you click on the arrow, it should be able to put um, 
what, which microphone that you're using and your audio output. So should do, but we can't hear you yet. Uh. No, that's not it. Oops. <laughs> that's what happens. You get bigger. <laughs> Um, but we'll work on it. We're still working on it. <laughs> okay, honey, no worries. No worries at all. So some of these are relevant to people in a lower income situation. Some of them are relevant to people who have actually got a little bit of money in their pocket that can actually put some of these in. But we also have options um, for people who don't um, to go do something similar, but not quite the same. So yeah, um, just to make sure that everybody is covered because people who thought that they were doing all right, because uh, Karen and I were talking about this just before, people who thought they were doing all right may not be doing all right now because that's the situation that we're in at this point. Um, also, because it's not just about the utilities at this point or the gas and the petrol prices and stuff like that. It's also about the food prices and the food prices are just going up and up and up and up and up because obviously things like the gas prices are going up and up and up and up and up, which means that the driver's prices are having to go up and up and up and up and up. Um, so yeah, it's not fun, shall we say. Um, but yeah, so obviously everything else is kicking in too. There's a K for a Karen. <gasps> <gasps> Hello. K for Karen. Why can't we hear you? <laughs> oh gosh. Just phone me. Okay. <laughs> All right, darling. I'll do that. Okay. We will get that done. Give me a second. All righty. We'll just go to oh, pop you out of there. Go to here. What is going on? Stop it. Stop it. Um, there we go. Right. Okay. <laughs> we will get this. All right. And I'm going to swap my stuff out. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. We're going to make this so that everyone can do it. Okay. Do, do, do. <laughs> Ooh. Hello. Hi, hon. Yes, you're here. Hi. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> Did I just ring you on Skype by accident? Because this isn't a phone call, is it? I just rang you on Skype. Yeah, I'm a numpty. Okay, give me a second. <laughs> Oh, okay. Hang on a second. I will get this right. I will. I will. I will. I will. Right. That's better. That's better. Hello again. There you go. Now I can hear you. Hooray. Hi. Hi. Yay. We can hear you now. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad we've got this sorted. Yeah, we have got this sorted. Okay, awesome. Fantastic. Oh. I'm a bit here. Yeah. <laughs> Live TV, folks. It always goes right. <laughs> well, other end of the country. I <laughs> know. Oh, we'll figure it out for another time. 
at some point. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So we've got um, – that doesn't say very much about how to save gas, to be honest except for upgrading your gas appliances to more efficient models or installing a smart thermostat to help you track usage and have more control over your gas powered central heating. That doesn't, that's not incredibly helpful actually. And I, I thought that that they might have some better ideas than that, but obviously they don't. Um, for many of us who are on low income how in low income households um we don't have the control to be able to mess about with thermostats and stuff because we can't do things like get new boilers and all that kind of thing um in council properties there are thermostats and we have started using ours this year we've put it on 20 and to be honest that is probably the best thing that we ever did because we actually saved ourselves two-thirds of the money that we spent last year on the gas central heating which are, I, you can see that big white thing behind me. That's one of the radiators there. It's probably the best thing that we did because before that, Danny was just turning it on full. <laughs> turning this place into Barbados and then turning it off two hours later when we were all so hot, it was ridiculous. Do you have gas where you are, Karen? We do. We are um, gas and electric. My previous place just had electric, so that yeah. was um, that was actually difficult to heat. It's definitely much more efficient and easier and warmer with gas. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we had, and, and I think a lot of um, a lot of the. Uh, smaller properties have this what we have in the UK economy seven heating yeah and storage heating um so literally I had I had one heater and it used to heat up it used to store the energy overnight um because that's when we have our cheapest electricity if you're on an economy seven plan yeah and then throughout the day it just let out a very slow um release of this heat and it, the place was never warm and you know i lived there for 17 years and yeah. i could never get the storage heater right you know? no i completely yeah. understand that my sister has one um purple she's um she has economy seven um storage heaters in her place and they're absolutely pretty much useless to be fair yeah unless you put them on so high that you're chugging through the electric as if it's, you know, sweeties. <laughs> yes, I mean, mine, I used to put mine on high and it, it still never did anything. Um, and you end up buying one of these little um, electric things, a little electric plug-in heater, which is the most expensive way to heat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. No, it's not good. Hi, Ashley. Ashley's turned up. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it's pretty difficult for people with those because they're not that cost effective, to be fair, um, even though they tell you about the whole Economy 7 thing and, you know, being down to pennies at night time and a bit more, well, probably seven times as much during the day, if I remember right. Um so I used to work for Southern Electric as one of their customer service officers. So I kind of have a little bit of an insight into some of the goings on. Because <sighs> it used to be our job to go around and fix the messes that the salespeople had made going around and turning people off their electric bill. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was my job. That was fun. <laughs> um yeah so okay so they've got number one here for electric savings they've got turn off standby appliances okay so um turn appliances off at the plug to save an average on 30 pound a year 
Use plug sockets that can be turned off and on via your phone to make sure you switch unused appliances off. You should could use cheaper timer plugs to schedule turning appliances off. Ooh. I'm stalking, okay. but yeah. I don't know. Well, to operate things by your phone, to have, you know, as they want us to go into smart homes, that's actually quite an expensive investment to start off with. It really is. Um, um, yeah. Every, I know a lot of people have smartphones, but not many people have smartphones. No. But um, now, our, for example, our TV is, is not a new TV. It's at least 10 years old. But, and modern TVs, they don't turn off. When you, when you turn them off, what we used to do before we replaced our TV 10 years ago is we would turn the TV off and then as we were going to bed, we would get up and we would press the button, which turned it off of standby. Yeah. But there's no button on modern TVs and modern TVs stay on. And the reason they stay on is because they are linked to things like your sky boxes, your, your digital mm -hmm. TV boxes, your recording boxes. So if you wanted to record a, a foreign football game at 2 a.m., it needs the power to be able to do that. Yes. So the way around this stand, and yes, absolutely, turn off things you don't need at the wall. Mm. It's it saves you money. Um, it's better for the environment, and also, in particularly the case of mobile phone charges, it's much safer. Yeah. To have them turned off, even if you've got your mobile phone plugged in and it's on, and you just you know when it needs it, you plug it in. It is still withdrawing electricity, even though it's not plugged in. Yes. So you will still be using electricity. Yeah. But back to the TV, you can get these um, extension leads, which has lots of different uh, plugs that you can put in. Mm. And it is designed for if your TV doesn't turn off. Yeah. So you, you put your, there's a spe specific socket for your TV plug. You put that in. And then you plug your other things in, you know, your DVD player, mm -hmm. whatever you've got within your TV entertainment unit thing. And there are two options for always on. So if you have a recorder box of some description, you can have that always on. But what this unit does, and it's about £15, is once you turn your TV off, even though they're designed not to go off, the plug socket will turn it off and it will turn everything else off. Right. So your games, consoles, all that kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, which you're not going to use if your TV is not turned on anyway. So with just one button, you turn everything off. You've not got to get anything on your phone. You've not got to pay for a fancy smart house. Oh, yeah, they're, they're a bit expensive, aren't they? I had a quick look at them today and I thought, ha, 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 you're kidding, right? <laughs> oh, one one company that sells them they're the same amount of money as someone would get on universal credit as a single person for a month Blimey. yeah so a little bit out of range for a lot of people to be honest yeah, yeah. and it, it's like it's like a lot of things you know you have to find a balance. A small, in some cases, a small amount of money somewhere in yeah. order to save money. Yeah. Um, that's that. This is why you know that we can apply the Vimes boots theory of economics. Yes. Um, if you follow Terry Pratchett. Mm -hmm. Those that don't, um, it's it's from a series of books called The Discord from Terry Pratchett. Vimes was a policeman, and. His, his idea was that, and it, it's really true, if you are hard up and you're spending $20 on a pair of boots, mm -hmm. because that's all you can afford, then after a year of, you know, pounding the streets as he did as a policeman, you would mm -hmm. have to buy a new pair of boots. And every year you were spending $20 on a new pair of boots. Yeah. But if you had, if you were rich and had the disposable income, you could spend $80 on a good pair of boots and never have to replace that pair of boots. Yeah. So they're rich. That's how they get richer. Whereas if you're on a lower income, you're spending that $20 every year for life, you know, every year that you need them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a big um, professor of 
trying to figure out whether something is a false economy or not. It's all right to buy something that's cheap, but as long as the quality is there and it's doing what you need it to for the time you need it to do it. You know, it's 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 no good going and buying something for twenty pounds if you know it's only going to last you a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ashley was just saying I'm stalking, but yes, we have storage heaters, four of them. We only ever have one on though, too expensive. Yeah, totally get it. We totally get it. Okay, so number two. So the, what I would say with this one was rather than have, if you can't afford to get the plug sockets and things like that, just turn it all off at the wall. Yeah. You know, just turn it all off at the wall. The other thing as well about um, phone chargers. Now, don't leave your charger on overnight with your phone on it because it actually messes your battery up. You only need to charge it for as long as it takes to get to full battery and then you need to take it off because otherwise you'll end up with no battery power. And then you'll have to do things like stick the battery in the freezer to reset it and stupid things like that or get a new phone, which is all money at the end of the day. And you don't want to have that. So um, this number two is install a smart thermostat. Um, smart thermostats can make your heating more efficient by only warming the rooms you're using. They learn how long it takes to heat your home so they have can have it at the right temperature at exactly the right time. They all can also be controlled by your phone, which means you won't have to come back to a cold home. If you installed room thermostats, programmers and thermostatic radio, radiator valves, you could save around 75 a year. Yeah, I think these were the things that I was looking at earlier as well. And they are quite, they, they're, for some people, they will be out of reach at this point so i know that karen has used them before so i'll get her to explain them a bit more but what i would say is that if you cannot afford the outlay for smart thermostats um or not allowed to get them because you are in a rented property or the council won't allow you to get them um i would suggest learning how to turn off your radiators because most radiators definitely in council properties have a off switch or a little round knob at the side, and you turn it off and you can work out which way it turns off. Um, yeah, so, and then just turn it off in the rooms that you're not using. We're turning ours off in the kitchen because we don't need it in there. Kitchens are better off without a radiator in them because it just causes more mold and not a good environment. So, yeah, that's what we would be doing in there. So, yeah. Over to you, Karen, <laughs> with the smart um, thermostats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it might, we must have got crosswired somewhere. We have yeah. a smart meter, but we oh. have a smart thermostat that you can control from your phone. Oh, okay. Um, and pre-warm um, anything. I think um, because we're quite environmentally conscious, yeah. we wouldn't do that kind of thing. But, okay. Sorry. Um, when you were mentioning, that's all right, when you mentioned the radiator thermostats, um mm. not all houses have them yeah on each radiator you are you know you might have the main ones yeah but a lot of them don't have those so um to buy a radiator thermostat it's about 13 pounds mm -hmm. um so you can turn them off in places you know where you couldn't turn them off before you know we, we have a guest bedroom which is ironically the warmest bedroom in the house room <laughs> in the house but it's, it's hardly ever used, so it's utterly pointless yeah. in heating that room. So we did get a firm, firm that fitted to that, and mm -hmm. um, so we can have that room turned off. But when you're saying they're 13 pounds, that's if you buy privately, yeah. there are loads of grants and companies out there that if you are on uh, low-income benefits or... Um, certain other benefits mm -hmm. and there's like a whole list of them and there's so many companies out there that you that they will come out they will do heating checks for free they will do um they i did double check the company warm front the website is warmfront.uk right they're still going they will do anybody no matter your circumstances where you are 
for free, free home insulation check and a free heating check. Yeah. If you're a low income family or you have certain benefits that make you eligible, you get a grant and they will do work for you. But their scheme for this year ends on the end of this month, April 30th. Oh. So get over to that website and have them check. We have used them twice. Right. So I've used them in my old place and I've used them where we are now and they are very good. Um, yeah. They, and if, if there's something they suggest that you don't want, then they are totally fine with that. You don't have to have everything they suggest. Yeah. Um, I, I told you before, they stuck this film over my windows mm. and I just want double glazing. But then that blocked all air circulation and my water yeah. in the water. So I took that off. Yeah. Um, and I declined that in, in my new place. Like my windows here are 300 years old. So there's lots of drafts in this house. Yes. But I said I didn't want them touched. I didn't want that. Film no. Put yeah. Up. But that is something, actually, that's something you can buy separately anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, you just put like a, a double sided sticky tape around the edge of your windows. You buy this film that goes on it and they use a hairdryer to heat it and it puts it taut. That's really so, cool. Yeah. That's really handy. We use that in our bathroom over winter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that is a good website. Do you mm -hmm. want to list the other things I've got here? Yeah, sure. That, that I was going to suggest. Yeah. So, so the main, I mean, these websites you can use, I mean, Warm Front, that gives uh, financial help to people in the UK. There is a website which is so handy, and I think this would benefit anybody no matter where in the world you are. Mm -hmm. It's called simpleenergyadvice.org.uk. Yeah. Now, there, if you're in the UK, you can find out if you're eligible for a home energy grant for things like loft and chemical insulation. Mm -hmm. um, they also have ways to make your home warmer and greener and how to reduce your bills. Nice. Now, obviously, that will um, apply to anybody mm -hmm. in the world for hints and tips on what we can do. We yeah. all know things like don't leave your lights on, you know, don't, yeah. uh, you know, don't heat rooms that you don't You're not use, using, yeah. Um, things like that. So, um, so that is a really handy website. Um, I really highly recommend that one. There's something else. If you go to gov.uk mm. and look under their household energy, they have got an energy efficiency calculator, and that will give you personalised advice on exactly what you can do to reduce your bills. Right. So, um, you know, we you, you, you can look up general ideas, but if you want personalised advice, um, and it's all free, you just don't want it, and um, so it, it'll calculate things for you. Um, and the the penultimate one I've got here, warm home discount. So that is something you can get. It's a one off one hundred and forty pound discount off your winter electricity bill. We've just missed it because it finishes in March, but it's September to March. Right. There are certain criteria for this. If you claim the guarantee credit element of the pension credit, you can get it. Mm -hmm. If you are a low-income family or if you get certain means-tested benefits and if you have a pay-as-you-go meter, which a lot of people do, yeah. then you can qualify for this £140 discount. Okay. And there's a phone number for that. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I've got you on the screen. I should type it up on the screen. <laughs> What I might get you to do as well is afterwards, if you can send me a load of these links and I'll put them in the description below so yeah, that anyone good. who comes and rewatches yeah. this, re does the replay, we can put all, all the resources that we mention in this video today down below. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, yeah, I will do yeah. That, that'll make so. it good so that everybody can see it. I'm pretty sure I clicked the um, save chat thing this week. <laughs> I forgot that I had to do it on every single live. <laughs> um, just one last place to try is your own energy supplier. Yeah. So we've all got different energy suppliers. Mm -hmm. But, again, if you claim certain benefits, 
If you can accept benefits and live in private housing, that's either you own it or you rent a private landlord. Yeah. Or you live in social housing, so pretty much for anybody. Mm -hmm. You may get help with the cost of insulation and replacing or repairing your boiler. Yeah. Or other upgrades to your heating, which will include those um, thermostats, your radiator. Yeah. So obviously one of the big things that's recommended is get an energy efficient boiler. Yes. But they are a lot of money. You know, they are a lot, lot of money. Especially, they are. Especially now. Yeah. You know, at the beginning when you were saying, you know, the uh, fuel is going up, uh, mm. you know, the petrol and the diesel, all that, just yep. astronomical in the UK. We've got yeah. our, our heating. We've got our, um, the standing um, me. <laughs> standing charge. Yes. Um, and also the national insurance has just gone up as well. Yes, it has. Quite everything is. Lot. So they seem to yep. be trying everything at us at once. And, yes. And food, of course. And yes. And we've got difficulty getting food here. There are the usual climate crises mm -hmm. that are coming along that such and such a crop isn't doing very well. Yeah. The price of that's going to go up. So well, we really need to be looking at saving every penny we can. Absolutely. Um, I mean, so, yeah, we'd only produce. With your own. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> just get in touch with your, your own supplier, you know. Yeah. Um, we've recently in the UK had a logo bust mm. and then she'd been transferred over to somebody else. Um, I've got a friend who's had her electricity bills quadrupled. Wow. Recently because she was with a company that went bust, didn't have an option on where she got put. They just dumped her somewhere and then that was it. That's it. No choice. So, um, yeah, so everyone's in a bit of a pickle. They are in a bit of a pickle. I honestly couldn't believe some of the stories that I was getting from people who are either sending me personal messages or in the group itself. Um, in Blue's Barrel of Monkeys is our Facebook group, so if anyone wanted to join in there and get some more hints and tips or support even um, either to do with budgeting or um, gardening or food or just to have a bit of a laugh you're more than welcome um, the link's below in the description for that but yeah there's been some I think it was Janine that showed her pictures of her smart meter on the 31st of March and then on the 1st of April and I think I, I nearly fell over I was like what because hers had literally gone up by 300 percent overnight Blimey. Yeah, and um, Abby, who's, yeah, she's in the group as well, her direct debit had gone up from 108 to £250 a month. I mean, how, how are people supposed to be able to pay that? It's like, it's silly. One problem I have is that our immersion heater is on economy seven, but now the clocks have gone forward. It still heats when the cheap rate has passed. Wow. Is there no way of fixing that, actually? Because that's really not good. There's got to be some way to have some kind of timer on that that you can fix for British Standard Time. Or maybe, I don't know. Is it what have we done in previous years? Yeah. Well, this happens twice a year, every year. What? What's mm. been the solution before? Or we just put up with it? Yeah. See, our council does all the electric and gas themselves. They have their own gas technicians and electric technicians. And they put, they're in charge of all the gas and electric for their housing. Um, not the payment of it, just the looking after of it, if you know what I mean. So it may be that they should, if you ring up um, your housing people they should be able to give you some kind of an idea of what to do or send someone out to have a look at it because I think the bigger councils they all have their own there is a timer on it but I alter it and it makes no difference I would ring your housing people and talk to them and say because it's actually their responsibility at the end of the day. So give them a call and um, see if they can suggest something or send somebody out or something. 
because I think that would be your best bet at this point, to be honest. Um, because even an hour with an immersion, he immersion heater on the not cheap rates is pretty astronomical. It's literally what you pay overnight for the rest of the night in one hour, which is horrific. Um, sorry about any building noises. Someone has just decided to um, take a bulldozer down the road. So, yeah, apologies. <laughs> we can't hear anything. It's all right. oh, I'm so pleased. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, really? <laughs> Okay, so number four, they've suggested buy efficient appliances. Now, this is great if you've got the money for that, but if you don't have the money for that, obviously you can't. But just have a look on places like Facebook Marketplace and FreeCycle and other secondhand places that may have more efficient appliances at a cost that you may be able to afford. However, at the end of the day, You'll be saving pennies rather than pounds unless you have that appliance for over 11 years. Um, fridge freezer um, only saves around £320 in energy bills over its lifetime if it's an A triple, triple, yeah, A triple plus, um, which is around 10 years. So it's £32 a year. Same with the washing machine. Um, £65 less than an A-plus washing machine over an 11-year product lifespan. And dishwashers only cost £7 less a year than the older models. So if you actually look into it and you have a look it, it's all very well saying go and get, um, you know, a, a brand new washing machine and, and fridge freezer and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're actually not saving that much. You're really not. It, it's, it may seem like a big number, but when you spread that over £320 over 10 years, it's £32 a, a year, which isn't really saving you a shocking lot at the end of the day. Um, we've put a hundred thinking environmentally, yeah. If unreplace if you need to, yes. If, if something dies and you need to get it, yes. Um, because you know, as you say, it's such a small saving, yeah. Don't go out and just waste electrical, yeah. Units, um, to me, that buy. that's actually a false economy because even though you have a saving, it's not worth the saving. Do you know what I mean? Um because it, it just really isn't worth the savings to get a newer model just for £32 savings a year or £7 savings a year or whatever. It's not worth it. That, to me, is actually a sort of false economy. And I know every penny counts, but if you've got a, a working fridge freezer or washing machine or dishwasher, if you need to use one, you know, use the one that you've got and then just get a second-hand one because you're, you're going to save money just by getting a second-hand one. I mean, yes, we went and bought a brand-new washing machine. Neither of us have ever had one before in our lives. Nor me or Tani have ever had a brand-new washing machine. We've only ever had a second-hand one. So we just thought that we would treat ourselves this time and get a really decent washing machine, um, and we have. But that was because the other one had conked. We tried and fixed it so many times it wasn't funny, and it just wasn't worth keeping anymore and we did everything we could so you know um what was that Ashley we have put 137 pounds on our prepayment key this month oh dude that's a lot that is a lot a lot a lot that really is um we are on with a company called Utilita, which is specifically for prepayment keys. Okay, and they do keep the costs down as much as possible. 
possibly have a look at them just as a possibility um yeah i mean if you're on a fixed rate which doesn't sound like you are on a fixed rate at all um yeah you can swap and change whenever you like um this next one is number five install a new boiler but not everyone can do that and you can only do that if it's in your you're on utilita wow i'm shocked i'm actually you've got me dumbfounded wow see I try, i'm trying to get out of tanny what he's putting on the electric each week but i think pretty much at the moment we're putting 20 pounds on a, a week and that's it that's all we're putting on um and we've been putting on about 10 pounds of gas a month but i don't know what he's been doing this month because he hasn't told me yet he has said that we are chewing through the electric um and the only way that we'd be doing that is because I'm working on the computer all day during the day while he's at work. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so number five, they put install a new boiler, but obviously you can't do that if you are in a rental property or in a council property um, without permission of your landlord or the council. Um yeah number six is wash clothes at a lower temperature yeah <laughs> um even when i was chefing i used to wash my clothes in cold water rather than hot water um as long as you soak i would pre-soak your clothes first in something like a nappy soaker or something like that especially if they're whites um or have sort of greasy stuff on them and then you can wash them in the washing machine on cold water with no out problem and it will stop because the front loading washing machines obviously they heat the water up inside the unit and the top loading washing machines have separate tap tap attachments so you're going through the boiler with the hot water everything here's electric no gas installed but there is gas pipe work okay okay i don't know what do you reckon about that one karen do you reckon he might be able to talk to his housing people and find out what's got the go is with the gas um say that i get my i actually lost my internet so okay <laughs> i can't see the live chat anymore oh, okay <laughs> Welcome to all right. six. that's all right um, ashley yeah, said everything ashley said that everything here is electric no gas installed but there is gas pipe work and do you rent you uh, social housing or do you rent privately ashley you're in social housing aren't you dunning Oh, I don't know too much about that. Um, I'm pretty sure if he gets hold of the council, his council or his housing people, then he could talk to them about that, find out what's going on. He could talk to them. Yeah. I guess it, it, it will vary between council to council how yeah. much money they've got, how much, um, and, and how much the individual that they've got is inclined to do that you know and how much mm. how much other work they've got on that they have to um spend their budget on yeah um you know ashley does tick the boxes that he has energy and heat yes he does um yeah so they, it might be a lower priority but it is always worth phoning I, worth yeah I, I would get hold of your housing people and or your council about gas and electric and have a chat to them and see what they have to say. Um, I know that some social housing that had gas in them had it removed for safety reasons. We're going to put that in inverted commas, safety reasons. Um, 
like they've removed the chimneys and blocked them all up for safety reasons. It's actually an insurance reason. It's not a safety reason at all. Um, but you can talk them into it. Yeah, they, you can talk the councils into allowing you to unblock chimneys and to have gas put in if you have your own home insurance, if they've removed it for some reason of safety. Okay, so, yeah, if, if you're willing to do that, then, or able to, but have a chat to them first and see what they say. Because you never know, they might just go, do you know what, actually, with things the way they are, it's probably cheaper for you to go on the gas than it is to be on the electric. So, yeah, they may do that. Okay, so be smarter about water. Yes, absolutely be smarter about water. This is one utility that people tend to forget about. Washing up in a bowl rather than in the sink will save you liters <laughs> also i will say if you have a garden and you are filling the washing up bowl if you have gas um water gas hot water you usually lose about five liters of water before the hot starts to come on so if you start saving that and you can then use that to put on your gardens before um, so you don't, it doesn't just go down the sink. Okay. So you're not wasting it. You've still got that five liters every time you go to fill the sink up. Um, yeah. So that's one thing. <laughs> um, and then that water from the washing up bowl as well can go onto the gardens, onto beds. I would put them on beds, not in containers so much. Um, yeah. And that I'll save on watering costs but i will be doing a video very shortly on making your own um dishwashing liquid which is safer to use on the gardens than possibly some of the more fluffy stuff that we get the normal dish soaps and stuff um changing your shower head to a more efficient one that's a really good one um and having one minute less in the shower which is all very well for people who can stand up and move very quickly but i'm pretty sure karen will know as much as i do that trying to get us out of a shower <laughs> one minute early is not gonna happen because it takes us five minutes just to turn around <laughs> I'm not too bad in a shower, but I do, um, I do prefer a bath. I wish I had a um, bath. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I know, like, number one is shower instead of a bath. Yeah. Um, but my bath is my pain relief, so. Absolutely, that's, absolutely. That's that That's, and, yeah. You know, or I'll have a wash, you know, um. I'll, I'll have a wash and then a bath in the evening or... Yeah, you know, I mean... Particular pain in the morning, I shall wash in the night time instead. That's... But you, you can get shower timers, can't you? You can get shower timers. Also, um, I remember as a kid, bath night was Sunday night. Yeah. We didn't have a bath or... We didn't have showers. There was only a bath. A shower. Can I... <laughs> I don't know if you remember this, Karen, but you remember those um, shower attachments that went onto the taps? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. That <laughs> used to pop off and you'd end up either with third-degree burns or frozen to death? Yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that was the shower when we were kids. Not that old. Just saying. Not that old. <laughs> Neither of us. <laughs> we do have this. I know it's it, in... In the modern day, mm. and um, I'm sure it's the same in the States as well. Yeah. That, you know, even when you're in hospital, it's your bath baby every day. Yeah. That was the thing you did. And it, it's one thing if they've had a nappy explosion, yeah. you know, and you, and you need to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But particularly for Rose, I couldn't bath her every day because she got eczema. Yeah. She doesn't suffer from eczema, but bathing her every day was doing that. Yeah. And... Um, we don't follow celebrities, but 
um, I noticed on Facebook something popped up and it was a scandal because is it Ashton Kushter and Mila somebody? Yeah. They've they've got um, kids and they don't bath them every day. And That's... it was this amazing scandal and I just thought, well, hang on a minute. How is it a scandal? Uh, I don't yeah. understand how that's a scandal. Every other day of the week, all right, every other day of the week, we used to have a stand-up wash at the sink. Hang on a second, guys. I've got a delivery. <laughs> Give me two seconds. Oh, no. <laughs> God. Ah. I hope you've got something good. <laughs> I, I can't pick it up, someone. Can you pick it up for me, please? Like, literally, I can't. Thank you. <laughs> he was rude. While I'm sorting that out, I'll, I'll add this in just quickly because you mentioned washing machines earlier. Yeah. Make sure your washing machine is full when you do it. If you've only got half a load, then save it until you've got a full load because doing two half loads will use more water if you're on a water meter that's going to hurt and it also uses more electricity than doing one full load yeah and also can you wear that top another day you yeah know, um for us gardeners you know if, if you've got a you know dirty pair of jeans or you think oh, i'll put these jeans in the wash i'll oh, hang on a minute i'm going down the allotment this afternoon i'll wear the jeans to the allotment this afternoon exactly then i can put them in the wash so just be a little bit more smarter um and it's you know again it's greener as well all of these things where you're saving electricity um, and you're saving gas and you're saving water that is greener as well exactly which is, which is great because we should all be trying to do more we can all do more absolutely we can you know i mean this is where like everyone buys them because they're cute now is the bowl and the and the jug you know oh, yes. the the wash bowl and the jug, and the, and they use them as vases or something to put a few primroses in or something like that. Well, that actually <laughs> is what some of us used to use <laughs> as a stand up wash um, six days a week, and then bath day was Sunday. But yeah. Dad got first bath, then Mum, then me. <laughs> we all had the same bath, same bath water. You know, and then mum used to get the bowl out and she'd be um, scooping all the um, water out as much as she could from the bath to put on the um, on, on the veg bed out the back. Yeah. You know, because every little bit helped. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Something else, actually, that you mentioned earlier about washing up. Well, yeah, you know, saying obviously use a bowl because that's better. I think that's pretty much an English thing. Um, it is. Or a, a British thing. I don't think, um, what, from what I've seen from our friends in the States, they get confused over to why we use a bowl. But I can't imagine not using the bowl. You the, know, the bowl was always there because our kitchens. The dregs of tea or whatever, you tip it down the side. Yeah. It stains clanking your sink and, and marking your sink. Yeah. And you're using, using less water. Yeah, well, but if you're lucky enough to have a dishwasher, a full load uses less water than even a washing up bowl. So, but then you've got to pay for the electric to run it as well, which is make sure it is full before you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. as well. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It swings and roundabouts as well. It's like it's great that it uses less water. But that water goes down the down the drain. Yes. Whereas if you use it in a bowl and do your washing up in the bowl, that water there, and if you don't have an outdoor tap, or even if you do have an outdoor tap, you can use that to wash to for your plants and things. Yes. Um, yes. Which, so you're kind of looking at a swings and roundabout situation with things like that, which is a bit yeah. of a pain in the bum. So yeah, okay. So I got delivery. <laughs> There was actually another one sitting there that I didn't realise was there. Um, I'll just do this very, very quickly. Ow. While we're on the subject of water in the garden, mm -hmm. water early in the morning 
or at the end of the day, which avoids evaporation. Yeah. Um, if you have a water butt, use a water butt. Yes. Um, or collect the rainwater in containers. Yeah. You know, if it's raining and you've got something that is, you know, is out in the garden that just by accident has picked up. Absolutely. Up. Absolutely. Um, if you're store, make sure you cover it up because it will get out with the tumble. Um, so, you know some things that that, we, that people do, which is actually we'll do electricity and uh, and water. People will go to the fridge and they'll open the fridge and they might get some milk out of the fridge. Yeah. Make their cup of tea and leave the fridge door open. Yes. They okay, Ashley. shut that fridge door, and it's amazing the amount of people that that do that and that small action of closing the fridge door. Yeah. Just putting the milk in, then opening it again. Yeah. Keep that heat into the fridge. Um, and also leaving taps running. Yes. Leaving taps running. Yeah, like when you're doing um, your teeth and things. Yeah. Right, we were only allowed to have a little tumbler of water. And we had to do all of that in the tumbler of water. <laughs> you know, and then that... Mum was a nightmare. She like by today's standards, my mum was a nightmare. But what she was doing was what her mother had done, and what her mother had done before that, and what her mother had done before that. You know, and and they'd just been saving the water to go on whatever plants they had because they couldn't afford to be, you know, pumping water and bringing it in and doing all of that kind of stuff. It just wasn't feasible. And now we're looking yeah. at it and going. Well, actually, it makes a lot of sense because you're reusing the water that was already an issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, while, while I've, uh, I've not got too much on this one, I'll just go through. While you're talking about mm -hmm. um, being in the bathroom, yeah, the water bags for toilet systems. Yes, water um, bags. You can get these free from your water company. Mm-hmm. Um, they they are the equivalent of an old fashioned brick, you yeah. know, at least put the brick in to displace the water, to save water as it's filling up. Mm -hmm. You can, if you are replacing your toilet, you can get short flush ones, but of course, you know, these things only tend to happen once in a lifetime. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, the other things I will run through um, boil only what you need in the kettle. It will save water and electricity, and it tastes nicer. Now, I know it's the, the British that are, um, you know, the experts at making tea. Um, when you boil your water, mm. you put fresh water in the kettle and use that, it tastes much nicer than if you have left the water. Say you boil a full, a full kettle, yeah. you use a bit of it for your cup of tea, and then you reboil it again later for another cup of tea, it won't taste as nice because the because the oxygen oxygenation in the water yeah doesn't taste as nice. You're wasting electricity, so only boil what you need. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so I never really thought of that. Steam your vegetables. It uses less water and it's healthier. You can get stack steamers. So, for example, yeah. I've got um, my steamer just goes into the saucepan. Mm. So I can boil, say, my potatoes in the saucepan and then I put a steamer on top and I've got my veggies in there. So I'm only using my gas ring. Yeah. You're saving water and gas there. Yeah. You can um, also get the little inserts that fold to go in a yes. pot, the old the old fashioned folding ones. And the other thing is as well, if you use less water to boil your veg with, so if you only use about a third of the amount of water as there are vegetables in there, and put a lid on it, yes. it actually steams it as well. And it gets it done in double quick time as well. So you've yes, got both of those as an option. One. Yeah. So if you don't have you need, all the hand. other steamy things, you know, that's an option. But yeah. I, I'm, but it's, it's yeah. kind of what you're doing, whether it's pasta or, you know, any veg, whatever yeah. you're doing in the saucepan use the lid it keeps the heating it keeps the water in because the steam condenses and yes. goes back down into um into the pan mm -hmm. there's chance of it boiling dry yeah absolutely yeah, use your lid yep use your lids and water absolutely absolutely uh, 
talking about those um, steaming baskets mm-hmm. that, you, that you had, um, look in charity shops or thrift shops. Yes. For, um, old fashioned gadgets. You know, is, we're, we're not new at this. We're not new at having to be frugal. We're not the no. first to do it. They used to do it a lot, you know, yeah. in the 40s, 50s, 60s. That was, you know, and, and, you know, a bit later. They had so many wonderful gadgets. And as our elderly are passing away and, you know, they've had things passed down from their mothers or, or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, people come up and they haven't got a clue that they are chuck it in the charity shop. Yeah. Find out what these gadgets do. They are so efficient. Absolutely. I, I have a wonderful pan from my from my nan actually. I, it mm. was her mum's. It's a ghastly orange, but um, it has these wonderful little baskets inside of it, and you can divide it up and do all sorts of things. And you're just using the one pan. One pan. Yeah, and, I've and that's the thing. Those for sale anywhere. Yeah, you can. We've lost. Sorry. You can get the metal baskets that go inside. As uh, I think there's. There's either five in a set or four in a set. And you can get so that there's three in a set for bigger veg so that oh, you can actually put them into a normal saucepan and divide up your saucepan so that you can just put your veg in as you need to into that section. So you'd put your potatoes or your root veg in first, then you'd put you know, something else in and then you'd put your peas in last because they only need a couple yeah. of minutes. You know, so you you can you can do that, and you're only using one gas ring. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Why people don't do it still? I have a big one here, though. Okay, if you have an outside a garden, all right, and you have an outside area, get yourself a, or see if you can find. If you don't have a barbecue or you haven't built one, or, you know, you're not quite sure what to get or whatever, Um, or you don't have the resources to get one, see if you can find an old oil drum, turn it into a fire pit. Or if your washing machine kicks it, take the middle out of the washing machine and use that as a fire pit. Learn to cook on it. You can get wood for nothing. You go around to industrial estates where people are making bed frames and things. And I mentioned that because where I used to live, there was a bed frame maker and he used to put all the spare wood out the back in a skip for people to grab as firewood. Um, You know, so there's those options. Facebook Marketplace, people are always giving away wood because they've cut a tree down or a branch down. Make friends with the local tree surgeon. There are so many ways of getting free wood, it's not funny. Or even invest in a tabletop rocket stove or charcoal boiler. Um, They're about 30 quid and you can get them off Amazon. You can also get them off eBay, but it's what Chinese people use. A lot of Asian people use them. They have them up on the table or down on the floor and they just put a little casserole dish on the top. Takes about half an hour to cook in. And it's so much cheaper, especially with the weather starting to warm up now. Not using the stovetop and not using the oven and learning to cook outside and making the best use of that space using free fuel and being as canny as you possibly can with things. You're you're saving money right there without even thinking about it. Um, and then maybe if you are used to putting money on for cooking during that time that you would be cooking outside, still put that money on, but then you won't have to put that money on during winter because it's already stacked up. It's just an idea. It's something that we're going to be implementing a lot this week, this summer is cooking a lot more outside. Um, because we can get a lot of free wood around here. So, yeah, it's just about looking and seeing what you can do and where your resources are, I think, with things like that. But, you know, I mean, even looking on YouTube, um, if you have, if you own your own garden or you're in a social housing situation or you've got a really good landlord or whatever, see if they'll let you put up a, um, a pizza oven. 
because they're so easy. You can get free bricks everywhere, glass bottles pretty much everywhere, a bag of sand, builder sand, or two bags of builder sand, which is probably what you would need for it, and two bags of cement will probably cost you 20 quid, and then you would have like a wood fire oven in your backyard, and there are millions of, pic of videos on YouTube of how to make these things, millions of them, and it's really simple. So, you know, I mean, even go down the pub and see if they've got glass bottles if you don't have any glass bottles, you know? Loads of different options for things like that, but all completely usable. And if you can put a cover over the area where you use as an outdoor kitchen, then you can use it in the winter as well. Even though it's cold, you'll be able to still have a dry place that you can actually cook in. So, yeah, I mean, that's a, another option as well. Um, we did talk about, we did briefly mention about um, landlords and social housing, etc., cutting off chimneys and blocking them up. See if you can get them unblocked. Um, if you can get them unblocked and they're willing to do that, not only will you have a heat source in your home that you can run for literally nothing if you can get hold of someone who does wood or find a source for wood, um, but you've also got another way of cooking. It's another free source for cooking as well. Obviously, in the winter, you're not going to want to do it in the summer, but, you know, it's there. It's an option. So, yeah, there, there are different ways and means of doing things. It's just sometimes you're going to have to get a little bit inventive and and think, think, you know. Um, number eight on this list, Karen, is invest in double glazing. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, <laughs> but I happen to actually know someone who's just replaced their double glazing in a one bedroom flat and it's cost them 10 grand. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's a good thing to have, but wonderful it's not for everybody. No. But, um, you know, there's secondary glazing options. There is putting the film on the window. Yes. Options. We and personally live in a listed building, 300 years old. Yeah, and to they... Our windows, we have to have uh, very special ones. And That's expensive. Yeah, you can um, quadruple that quote yeah. for um, for putting windows in our house. So, mm. so that's not an option here. Because they have to but, look like the originals, don't they? yes yeah yeah they, they have to be um, yeah and you can't put double glazing in no you you have, they have to be timber framed single glazed mm. but there is one company that does them that are um very narrow so you can't see that a double glaze yeah and that just depends on the guy at the time but that's not going to apply to most of the people listening no today anyway no so um the other option is as well yeah. is if you can't afford the film and you can't afford getting your own double glazing and you're getting packages save your bubble wrap um bubble wrap, yeah. yeah i i used to live in an old pub that was um built in the 1700s so it was nice and chilly had sash windows and the the frames were actually rotting away it was that bad and basically for the whole of winter i would just bubble wrap the whole front window in my bedroom and it worked like that film does it worked exactly like that but it it did let a little bit of draft in but it's not as much so there was a little bit of airflow um but not as much as it would have if I had have done not done it at all. Um, the other thing is as well, if you have more modern windows, check the seals. Check the seals because you can actually get seal tape, and we've actually done that with this front window. Um, also, also, if you're in social housing, they have to new windows every 10 years. If you haven't had new windows in 10 years and you have been living in your property for more than 10 years, you need to get onto your council because they need to get those windows in. It is, it is a necessity by law. It's also in your tenancy agreement. Read it. The only reason they haven't done ours here is because they will be refurbishing all of these flats into three-bedroom houses. 
that's why we're not getting anything done and they won't do repairs because they'll get it all done when they get us out which would you'd think they'd get us out a bit quicker but apparently not <laughs> anywho so the other thing the next one was draft proof your property um seal cracks in floors and skirting boards line your letterbox and block any unused chimney to reduce your heating bills by up to 35 pounds a year yeah it mentioned it actually mentions the plastic lining um yeah this is i think that also things these these companies that i've mentioned before they are things that they will come and do yeah so they will do the, the film's only about two pounds for a big packet which will cover like all of your windows yeah it's super cheap it comes with everything you need yeah um i really recommend the film mm. and you can't see that it's there once it's done and you've got it taught it doesn't you know if you've got a bubble wrap at your window you know you've got bubble wrap at your windows. yeah this film it just looks like there's nothing there at all it's just a window oh, completely but these yeah. companies they will come and they will put a little brush thing over your letterbox they will do your um insulation around your doors yeah you know no that's good that's awesome yeah door worms <laughs> door snakes <laughs> that's the thing Snake, door yeah. snakes yeah they're really really cheap to make as well guys so um yeah i'll i'll look into that at some point i'll have to put a video up from that because they can be quite fun to make as well and you can use stuff that's just in the pantry. Curtains from a charity shop and my own draft excluders. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's it's not not a hard process to do. And it's, you know, it's really cool. So the other number 10 is insulate your roof. Um, which is great. If it's your roof. <laughs> um if you live in social housing, they will sometimes do it for you. Other times they will ask you to do it and pay you back a certain percentage of it. If you're in a rented property, talk to the landlord or the real estate agent and see what can be done. Um, also, number 11 is monitor your usage which is great if you've got a smart meter. If you don't have a smart meter, you can't monitor your usage. Um, well, you can. Free, yeah, some smart meters are free. Some of them, they will say, oh, no, you'll have to pay for that, depending on who your supplier is. Oh, yeah, they'll have to get yeah. They can, yeah, which is great fun. It's like, thanks for that. Also, I would suggest... Um, check your yeah no that's okay darling because we've got to wrap up in a second anyway we've gone so long okay um yeah so we're gonna say goodbye to karen bye karen yeah sorry <laughs> All right, thanks everybody, and um, thank you, Pam. That's all right, darling. I will put a link right, to your you. channel below and talk to you soon. Okay, darling. See you later. Okay, see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye okay. So yeah, there are quite a few different things that you can do to save money on your utility bills, um, but. Don't be scared by the big bucks ones. You don't need to do those. What we're going to do um, next week is we're going to look into greening, greening your home so that, um, you know, what a lot of people think that greening your home and becoming self-sufficient and becoming a lot more green and eco-friendly can be expensive. And it can be expensive if you go down certain routes, but it can also be a lot of fun. It will also save you a lot of money. Um in the long run as well so stay tuned for that um we will be here next week at 12 p.m uk time bst british standard time summertime british british summertime that's what it is 
Um, so many different ones. It's ridiculous. So thanks, guys, for hanging out with us today. Really do appreciate it. Hope you got something out of the video. If you're watching back, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we will see you next week and in videos during the week. Bye. Have an awesome one.